welcome to Medical Dialogues, your daily dose of health and medical news. I'm Roshni Dhar. Let's look at today's top news. Indian origin surgeon Dr. Raghu Ram conferred with orders of the British Empire Award. Eminent surgeon Dr. Raghu Ram has found a place in the prestigious Queen Elizabeth II's 2021 New Year's Honours List published in the London Gazette, the official publication of the Crown. Instituted in 1917 by King George V, the Queen's Honours are amongst the most prestigious awards worldwide. The 54-year-old Padma Shri Awardee Dr. Raghu Ram has achieved the rare distinction of becoming one of the youngest surgeons of Indian origin in over 100 years to be honoured by the Queen with an OBE, Officer of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire. This is the second highest ranking order of the British Empire Award conferred in recognition of his outstanding services towards improving breast cancer care and surgical education in India to UK-India relations. So today we have with us Dr. Raghuram. Namaskaram. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to Medical Dialogues, Dr. Raghu and Hartley. Congratulations to you on receiving the most prestigious award. Sir, as you all know that you have received Padma Shri Award in 2015. So how are you feeling now on receiving British Empire Award? First of all, I would like to say that I am deeply humbled and grateful for being chosen for this high honour, the officer of the most excellent order of the British Empire. Uh, that has been conferred by Her Majesty the Queen, uh, which was formally bestowed to me by His Ho Royal Highness Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, on the 30th of March. So uh, I would like to dedicate this award to my family for their rock solid support, to my patients who have given me an opportunity to be involved in their care, to my colleagues at Kim's Hospitals in Hyderabad and indeed to the Indian surgical fraternity across the world for their relentless service towards improving the art and science of surgery. So being one of the youngest surgeons in over 100 years of Indian origin to be conferred this high honor, I felt that this is an award uh, that I must dedicate to my colleagues, uh, Indian of Indian origin across the world. Having uh, been conferred the Padma Award in 2015 and the Dr. B.C. Roy National Award in 2016, I am extremely grateful to the government of India for considering me worthy of this high honor. So what, what made you choose this field in life that you should serve your country in this, in this field of being the breast cancer surgeon? Having uh, completed my post-graduation from Kasturba Medical College and obtaining first place in the qualifying university MS examinations from uh, this uh, medical college in Mangalore, I had a fire in my belly to pursue FRCS and that's what took me to the United Kingdom. Subsequent to passing the FRCS from three out of four Royal Colleges in 1997, uh, I worked in uh, various capacities as an SHO and as a registrar and obtained higher surgical training. And also during late 1990s, breast surgery was evolving as a distinct subspecialty in the United Kingdom. So that uh, made me interested to take up breast surgery as a, a subspecialty interest. And I obtained subspecialty training in oncoplastic breast surgery, both at Nottingham hospitals in London. In the UK, uh, my parents had come on a holiday and to cut a long story short, my mother noticed a lump and it was uh, diagnosed to be breast cancer. Being the only child, uh, I was profoundly affected and I then started making inquiries as to how breast cancer is managed, how breast disease is managed in India and as to what the levels of awareness is relating to early detection. And I realized that there are no dedicated breast centers and that the breast cancer awareness was in its infancy in the sense that there was very little awareness about the importance of early detection. And therefore, much as my wife, Dr. Vaijanti, who subspecialized in reproductive medicine, both of us had lucrative opportunities in the UK but we relocated 
lock, stock and barrel to India in 2007 to look after my mother and to serve my motherland. I came here with a mission to work alongside like-minded colleagues, friends and the government to make a meaningful difference to the delivery of breast health care. And in this context, I had a vision and the first aim was to establish a dedicated, freestanding, purpose-built breast center. The breast disease concept, a lot of people think when they notice a lump in the breast, it's a cancer, but nine out of 10 times, it's not a cancer. And these women need to be reassured. So something called reassuring the worried well. So therefore, the breast center that was established at Kim's Hospitals, which is referred to as Kim's Lakshmi Center for Breast Diseases, it's not just another cancer center. This is a purpose-built center where the entire assessment, including mammography, ultrasound, core biopsies, and a multidisciplinary assessment happens in a purpose-built freestanding place, not just under one roof, but in a purpose-built place. So this breast center concept that was established in 2007 paved the way for several other breast centers in the country. My second aim, which is actually dear to my heart, was to establish a foundation which was established alongside the breast center, which is uh, known as Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation. Both the foundation and the breast center at Kim's bear my mother's name to recognize uh, and salute her fight against breast cancer. So the Breast Cancer Foundation, the Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation over the past 15 years has been working relentlessly towards empowering people about the importance of early detection through a number of unique and innovative initiatives that has attracted national and international attention and indeed appreciation. The third aim of relocating to India was to implement a population-based screening program. So the foundation in partnership with the governments of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh implemented one of the largest population-based screening programs in this country by way of clinical breast examination, where the foundation has trained healthcare workers who are employed with the government and they have been trained to perform this clinical breast examination that was uh, monitored under the auspices of the Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation. So between 2012 and 2016, the foundation in partnership with the governments in the Telugu states implemented South Asia's largest population-based screening program where over 200,000 underprivileged women spread across 4,000 villages were screened for early signs of breast cancer. Those who were detected with breast cancer were uh, assessed again by the Aragisri run hospitals and they were treated free of cost. So this program in the Telugu states made a national impact after, uh, um, you know, I was conferred the Padma award in 2015 and I wrote to the Honorable Prime Minister to see whether this screening program that has been implemented in Telugu states can be implemented nationally. And so I was incorporated into the technical advisory group alongside many other national experts. And I'm very pleased to say that clinical breast examination based screening program, population based screening program is part of the national health missions screening initiative where cervical cancer, oral cancer and breast cancer are included. And this uh, screening program is being implemented across the country. And my final aim, uh, you know, uh, of returning to India, the short term goals included bringing together like minded surgeons, general surgeons, plastic surgeons, uh, who and surgical oncologists who are treating breast disease under one umbrella organization. So mirrored upon the Association of Breast Surgeons in the United Kingdom and the American Society of Breast Surgeons, which is the world's largest breast surgical society. The Association of Breast Surgeons of India was formed in 2011. And in 2021, we celebrated 10 positively eventful years where 
a number of initiatives and programs have been done to not only standardize the delivery of breast health care, but also train uh, trainee surgeons and help them when they go abroad, particularly in the United Kingdom. We have established strong links where trainees from India go to the UK to obtain targeted training. So it has been a very, very satisfying 15 years where uh, I have been uh, able to serve as a living bridge, so to speak, between the United Kingdom and India, trying to replicate the best of British practices uh, in an earnest endeavor to improve the delivery of breast health care in India. And so this could only happen with teamwork and with uh, people, uh, like-minded people coming together. And I'm so grateful to all my colleagues from across the country who have uh, stood together to ensure that we make a meaningful difference uh, to the delivery of breast health care in our country. So can you put some light on the awareness? Like as you all know that breast cancer programs are being conducted and technology is evolving every day, but still the cases in India especially are rising. If I talk about the breast cancer or cervical cancer, so what message you want to give to the public? Indeed. Uh, I think uh, there's a fine line between advocacy and scaring people. Uh, I don't want to scare anybody, but I would like to mention that breast cancer is the commonest cancer affecting women in our country. The main reasons being lack of awareness and absence of a robust screening program. So the first and foremost way of tackling this is breast awareness. There's a lot of difference between breast self-examination and breast awareness. Breast self-examination as a concept is being given up and is being replaced with what is called breast awareness, where women of all ages must be aware about how their breasts look and feel, not just at one particular time in the month, but throughout the month. If there is a painless lump in the breast, recent indrawing of the nipple, that is nipple retraction, any blood stain discharged from the nipple, recent excoriation of the skin overlying the nipple areola region, any puckering of the skin overlying the breast. These are symptoms suggestive of breast cancer, but every, as I mentioned to you, nine out of 10 breast health issues are benign. So when something like this is noticed, any new symptoms are noticed by the women, they must not ignore these symptoms. They must report to a specialist and the specialist by way of triple assessment, that is clinical examination, bilateral mammogram, which is an X-ray of the breast and ultrasound guided core needle biopsy. If there is a lump in the breast, will definitely be able to give the diagnosis, whether it is a benign or a cancer without the need for the lady to go under the knife. So therefore, the first point I'd like to emphasize is breast awareness. The second being women 40 years and over must have a screening mammogram. A screening mammogram is an X-ray of the breast which will help detect breast cancer many, many years before the lady can feel it or the doctor can feel it. So with these two ways, that is breast awareness, being aware, and secondly, through screening, we can detect breast cancers in the early stages. If we detect breast cancer in the early stages, the survival is significantly increased. The quality of life is significantly increased. And more importantly, if the cancer is picked up very early in the screen detected stage, even the difficult treatments like chemotherapy can be avoided. And in this day and age of technology, the improvements in surgical care, not only breast conserving surgery, that is breast preserving surgery can be done, but aesthetic breast surgery, that is oncoplastic breast conserving surgery, where after removing the lump to cover the defect, the techniques, surgical techniques are employed, plastic surgical techniques are employed to reshape the breast. So the breast need not be removed when breast cancers are picked up early. So there are several advantages, most importantly being that the survival and quality of life would be improved. 
as I, we are all aware, majority of women in our country live in villages. More than 70% live in rural India, where there are no facilities for mammography. There are very few dedicated breast radiologists. We don't have dedicated breast radiographers. So therefore, majority of the time, as far as the community is concerned, particularly in uh, rural India, where there are very limited facilities, community, uh, basically uh, uh, clinical breast examination is the best way to pick up early cancers, which is done by the healthcare workers. But where facilities are available, where we can afford to get a mammogram done, it's very important to get a screening mammogram every year from the age of 40. To the men who are watching this program, I think it is our duty to ensure that those of us who have women in their lives, it, it may be mother, grandmother, spouse, sister. So it's important to ensure that they get a screening mammogram every year. And it is our duty to gift a screening mammogram every year. So for a Deepavali, instead of buying a sari, one can always gift a mammogram because breast cancer is a big problem. It is a tsunami in our country. And if we have to address this disease, early detection is the mantra. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your time. It was, it was a pleasure having you on Medical Dialogues. And once again, heartily congratulations to you. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.